The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily represent those of Access Fort Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting group. Access Fort Wayne is a department of the Allen County Public Library. If you or anyone you know might be interested in making a television show, please call 260-421-1250. Dr. Rudy Cashman, welcome to our Mind, Body, Spirit show. What I'm really saying is that how we think, how we act, can affect our health. And today, uh, this can be fascinating because this will be about the effects of music on our brain uh, to feel good, just to be a normal, happy <laughs> person, or to be healthy or to even turn serious health conditions around, like a music can be used for treatment for cancer, for example. But my biggest emphasis I really uh, would like to have uh, is uh, on happiness, uh, our ability to lead a, a, a good life as family or, or as children. Uh, and there's a great book written, The Mozart Effect, uh, which I'd like to encourage you to to read, uh, if you like. It's an excellent uh, book. And what they're speaking about here is really the effects of a certain type of music on your brain, uh, Mozart's brain, uh, for example. So what can music do? It can reduce stress. Uh, in the years when I was doing neurosurgery for over 45 years, age 39, okay, uh, the, I'd be between hospitals, for example, and I'd be in a car, and I'd be turned on music uh, uh, quickly, and before you know it, I'm conducting the orchestra, and uh, my stresses of the day, I mean quickly, uh, became less. Uh, and I encourage people to do that on the way to work, or home from work, or for, first thing in the morning. So, and it does this, this is very interesting, and I want you to listen carefully, because nature, God's Spirit, designed in us uh, a quick fix uh, center and a long-term uh, serotonin center. The quick fix is the dopamine. Now we can uh, fix it with good things like music and laughter uh, and dancing or tap dancing like I do. Believe me, that's a quick fix. Other people might fix it with alcohol or uh, with uh, uh, cigarettes leading to addiction, opioids, for example. So we have in us uh, the uh, it's a very small center of the brain, the dopamine center in front of the uh, brain, uh, that uh, we can very quickly turn the situation around for good or for worse, depending whether you're smoking a cigarette, laughing or dancing, or listening to beautiful um, uh, music, or the long-term, the serotonin center that's further back in the brain, uh, sort of long-term, it's, it's like me playing tennis or pickleball, or, 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 or dancing or, or singing. Uh, I, I, do, I do all those things. I take singing lessons, tap dance lessons. They all affect my dopamine, the quick fix, or the long-term serotonin, serotonin centers. So music, like dancing, uh, uh, doing things in rhythm, has tremendous effect in, in us. Uh, ancient tribes probably danced and sang before they could speak, uh, based on history. Uh, they're thinking uh, that uh, uh, dancing and singing preceded language. Uh, yeah. So you read a lot about the Mozart effect. I mean, what are we talking about? We, most of us heard of Mozart, famous composer. Uh, and, uh, uh, and, and they found is that different music works for different people. Some Jazz makes them feel great. Others, it might be uh, something slower. But what they found out about Mozart music is that the, the rhythm uh, and the decibels 
uh, 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 perfect for relaxing uh, the brain. Uh, for example, uh, they play this music uh, uh, for adults and for children and find they learn better. Uh, they reduce their stress uh, better, but also if they play them for, <laughs> yes, for a bunch of cows, they increase their milk production. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what about Mozart himself? Uh, such a musical individual. Well, his parents were also musicians. They, they sang, played the piano, and played the violin. Uh, and they, those things were played for him even uh, when during the mother's pregnancy. Yes, yeah, she was playing music, and, and uh, dad was uh, playing the violin. And Mozart, uh, uh, in the uterus, could hear it. Yes, they have now proven uh, that uh, Hearing, the hearing apparatus is the first organ that develops around two or three months, uh, the first completed organ. So uh, when you're singing to your baby or, or the baby is listening to, to music that is uh, being played, will affect the brain of the child. It's called epigenetics. Uh, matter of fact, I saw it at Sweetwater yesterday. It was beautiful. Uh, where a two-year-old child, the mother, was holding a guitar very close to the child's ear in a loving manner. She had the little child uh, uh, play a couple of notes. Uh, and and uh, I don't know if the mother knew it or not, but that, that affects the brain elephant, uh, development uh, of that uh, infant, a very interesting. Uh, so Mozart was surrounded uh, uh, by music. I think he composed his uh, first sonata at age six. Yeah, at age six. So uh, and now we're starting, to, we're starting to realize that. We're playing music in intensive care, for example. Newborn babies, uh, they're playing music. They, f they found out uh, uh, that they thrive better. They seem to tolerate uh, uh, food uh, uh, better. Uh, and even sometimes we play uh, music during childbirth. I, uh, very uh, interesting because it changes the neurotransmitters uh, in the brain uh, uh, of the mother. I remember speaking to a mother, actually, uh, who had attended a lot of my mind-body uh, lectures, and, and she was a, a Russian lady married to a chiropractor in town. And uh, I went up to see her. She just had the baby. And, and, and I said, what anesthetic did you use? She said, Dr. Cashman. I'm surprised at you. I attended all your mind-body lectures, uh, and I just did some uh, meditation, listened to some music. I had no pain. This actually happened. And this is uh, true. This has been recorded. Half the women uh, uh, who, who listen uh, to music do some humming or singing uh, and uh, don't need any anesthesia at all because it has true effects on your neurotransmitters uh, of your uh, brain. It, and it opens up, and it, it reaches parts of the brain much deeper than anything else can do versus noise, versus organized uh, notes. It's, it's interesting. They've also found uh, that if you play someone with a pain, and you play him, say, uh, 30 minutes of Mozart uh, music, uh, and which, again, I said the frequency and the pitches are a bit lower. It's just, much more uh, uh, tranquil. It's like taking 10 milligrams of Valium. Yeah, they, they studied that. Uh, so uh, the, it is encoded deep in our brain musical patterns. Um, and, and that's been uh, uh, well uh, studied and, and well researched. And, uh, and they studied that in, in children too, if you play them uh, some music, they learn better. And they found uh, even some racial groups uh, from Africa, f for example, seem to learn a lot better while music is being played. I, I remember suggesting uh, years ago when I gave a talk on TV about this, is that if, if I was a principal of a school and I had different ethnic groups, learn what those ethnic groups uh, did years ago. Uh, and maybe as they walk into class, play certain types of music. Some respond better to jazz, 
some respond better to drumming, uh, for uh, example. So uh, when uh, you can change the behavior and rate of learning in children, because their brain is not fully developed till age 85, it's a missing, significant difference, even in different age groups, for example. Music uh, works uh, better in, during the teenage years, uh, for example, because the brain is developing uh, in steps. Kids, for example, age two, three, and four can uh, copy. Uh, you can teach them a lot better to, to march, for example, things like that. And a little, as they get a little older, uh, they uh, can sing patterns and choral music. Uh, uh, the brain behaves differently. There is a uh, gentleman, a Dr. Alfred Tomatis. He is not alive now, but he was in Paris, say, 1950, 1960s. And they have even there the Tomatis Hearing Center. It was an unbelievable place, open for, for, for decades. Uh, and they did a tremendous, he did a tremendous amount of research um, on hearing, music, uh, and uh, even uh, people could walk in there on the lunch hours, uh, sit there, put some plugs in their ears, and say, listen uh, to Mozart. Uh, and there's a description in the book about a secretary down the street who would walk in there for her tomatoes fix. And uh, uh, they, they called, them the, uh, called him the Einstein of sound. Uh, uh, the Sherlock Holmes uh, uh, of, of music, uh, or they even called Tomatis the Mozart of music. They studied all over the world. There were about a thousand Tomatis centers scattered throughout the world. Uh, and uh, and Tomatis said that the fetus in the, in the uterus, he is sound in the womb, yeah, sound in the womb, uh, starting at about eight to 12 weeks or so. Uh, and, uh, and the ear works uh, at four months. Uh, it, it works uh, very well. Uh, and, uh, and the infant can hear s some of the speech uh, or what the mother's doing, where she's singing a song or she's happy or she's sad through the uh, umbilical cord. Uh, uh, very uh, uh, interesting. And uh, so uh, whether the mother is uh, singing uh, some lullabies for her baby, for example, and there are uh, well-knowns uh, out there, uh, that uh, affects the brain development of the infant. Uh, that determines whether they're more musical, more, more logical, more mathematical uh, down the line. Remember what I said? The infant's brain develops over uh, 25, 25 years. So, uh, Dr. Lee Salk in 1962 published a book, uh, The Science of Lullabies. Yeah, about lullabies. Uh, uh, the mother uh, was or was not singing how happy she was, her endorphins, her own uh, feel good neurotransmitters will be uh, hit the bloodstream of, of the infant too. So the infant would be more likely to be happy or unhappy, uh, for example, or develop a sense of rhythm. Uh, or appreciate music more as, as they grow older. So the, as I mentioned already, the ear is the first organ to develop. Uh, and, and, uh, and fetuses listen pretty actively. At about 24 weeks, uh, it's been determined. And uh, so there's even a book written about that called The Secret Life of the Unborn Child. Oh, it, it would be interesting to read. So, uh, so speaking, reading, singing uh, to your baby uh, or a newborn uh, has great value, has a great value. Uh, uh, and uh, or read to them, uh, the little prince or Winnie the Pooh, uh, because they can hear pretty good at three or four months uh, and it could have effect on them. A good uh, one to play too is a Nutcracker uh, is another uh, good book. Uh, Helen Keller took a great deal of uh, interest in, uh, in hearing because she had a problem herself uh, and out of Atlanta and uh, she started playing uh, music uh, for uh, crying babies, for example, and found 94% fell asleep. That's kind of interesting. Uh, so about 7,000 hospitals actually have, uh, 
have songs and music available uh, for infants uh, in, in the, in the uh, units, the newborn uh, uh, units. And uh, many intensive cares for children uh, also have had uh, success playing uh, music, uh, uh, even preemies and prematures, uh, t for relaxation, for them to eat better. Uh, uh, so uh, why Mozart? Why his music than, say, Beethoven's, for example? Uh, Bach's music uh, is, is very mathematical, and, and, and the infants don't seem to respond as well or, or, or anyone, because Mozart's music is pure, uh, simple, high frequency, you know, high frequency uh, notes, not mathematical uh, like Bach, Bach, for example, uh, or the tidal waves of Beethoven, <laughs> tidal waves of, of uh, uh, Beethoven, okay, uh, or not playing like a Gregorian chant. So types of music, that's why uh, Mozart, okay? And, uh, but remember, baby Mozart was listening uh, to the mother and father's violin uh, and, and, and as an infant, uh, he was immersed, totally immersed in music. I mean, and he wanted to become a musical uh, child, uh, you know. He composed a trio at age six, yeah. Uh, 626 composition uh, he, in Salzburg, uh, he eventually composed. And when I visited Salzburg, uh, oh, about five years ago, uh, I flew in on a, it was just the most beautiful thing. It just started to snow as my plane entered Salzburg. Yeah, and then I, my hotel room was like in an old castle. And I visit uh, Mozart's old home, it, it, it's there. Uh, and all his compositions uh, piled to the ceiling. So I saw the stack of his 626 uh, composition. Can you imagine the privilege of, of that? Uh, so. Uh, he even wrote a wonderful music uh, during turmoil of his life. You know, he died at a young, at a young uh, age, and there was a lot of turmoil uh, uh, in, in his life. But, but uh, he even underwent a divorce, for example. Uh, he fell in love about every female um, uh, student that he had, all resulting in turmoil, can you imagine? Uh, and he wrote the magic flute during one of his psychological turmoils, actually. So when you went back to music right away, you must have been feeling better. And uh, uh, so, uh, so we think of the anatomy of sound. Different sounds have different uh, effects on us, which is very uh, uh, interesting. Another good book was written, The Music, Health, and Education, 1988. Uh, and it formed an institute in uh, Boulder, Colorado. And they, they studied sound and music and, happiness and healing. And we respond differently to different sounds. So really, it's worthwhile to try some, what may relax you, or may be totally different for me. So try these out. Uh, for example, uh, a sound om, you know, they use this a lot in the East, om. They keep it going for a few minutes and they find it's very relaxing. Uh, the uh, Another person's sound may be totally different. It may be ah, uh, or a universal one is e. Keep it going for a few minutes, and it seems to have universal relaxation. If you're in a den dentist chair, for example, it's good, maybe uh, best as you can, listen to music. You notice in some dental office habit, but if somehow you can, without anything moving too much, you know. Uh, uh, give give a sound e o if the, as long as the dentist lets you do it, okay. Uh, so uh, the uh, and what they found too is, is that there is rhythm in nature. You can produce certain sounds, say near sand, it'll form a pattern, a geometrical pattern. Yeah. So that's the the energy, the sound, you know, of the universe. And no, a normal ear. So uh, sounds occur as waves, frequencies, pitches. Pitches, uh, you can determine frequency, okay? How high did the no go? How low did it go? So these are uh, uh, pitches. But then there's actual noise itself uh, is measured in decibels. 
okay, in Hertz, H-E-R-T-Z. Uh, uh, piano is about 27, 4,000 Hertz, okay. Uh, the, uh, so it, it, that's how it's uh, uh, measured, but different, an opera singer might be over 160, normal speech is around 60. The leaves that you hear walking along, this is a storm, a hurricane, like recently, it's about 10 decibels, okay. Uh, whispering is about 30 decibels, okay. A conversation is about 60 decibels. Uh, car, horn, car horn, like somebody beat me today, for reasons I don't know, is 150. It did scare me a bit, okay. Music can be one to a million, but remember, you can only hear up to 20,000 decibels, okay. So a timbre is the quality of the waveform, but there's no method of measurement of it. Okay, so uh, sound actually has a, a shape to it. Uh, so you, as I was mentioning, uh, depending on the kind of sound, uh, you can take water or sand, for example, uh, and make diagrams and shapes of it depending on, 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 uh, on the Hertz power uh, of the music, of the uh, uh, wave pattern uh, of the uh, uh, music. I can determine, can determine shapes, so it's based uh, on even uh, what the sand and the water uh, is hearing. And uh, uh, so imagine uh, what sound effects can occur on your own cells, yeah, in your own body, your tissues, your organs. Uh, let me give you an example. Uh, I enjoy dancing, but sometimes uh, when I have to think of the steps, I don't seem to do as good, but uh, uh, I was at a wedding recently and there weren't any guys like to dance. So I was dancing with five girls at once. And it just, I, I couldn't stop. Went, went on for a couple of hours. Went on for a couple of hours. And, uh, and you know what it was? I think the music they were playing was resonating with my body. Yeah, with, not just with my ears, with the body itself, uh, so that everything seemed natural. And, and I don't have that many dance steps from a, a polka uh, to a samba to what uh, uh, memorized necessarily. I have to think about it a minute, but I was responding to those sounds, and I think they were in my ear, my brain, and in the body. They've done, of course, studies about sounds in brain recently. Uh, uh, in, their, in, in books now, you can see MRI scans of people's uh, brains. Renee Fleming was just in town this weekend, beautiful singer, beautiful singer, uh, wonderful songs. Uh, and she did a free music thing at the Civic the following day, and I, and I went to it. And, and she herself went inside of an MRI scanner and sang opera in it, and they recorded her brain. Normally, you know, what's, if you t take a, uh, functional MRI, which shows actual activity. Uh, there's the ear area, the hearing area, just above the uh, temporal lobes. Uh, but they found when you start singing opera, the whole brain exploded. It was active everywhere, and that's my point. Uh, in your brain, uh, the music may concentrate a bit in the hearing area, but if, if you, there's an orchestra living up there. Uh, and when you uh, fully uh, have it f functioning, the whole brain is reorganized. So if you want to reorganize your brain, get rid of uh, depression, uh, for example, uh, and you change the neurotransmitters in your brain, uh, uh, singing, dancing, music will do it. It was demonstrated on the MRI scan. It was a beautiful thing. Uh, uh, Renee Fleming uh, sang beautifully. And an interesting thing, too, was the first four songs she sang at the embassy the night before uh, uh, was Rich, Richard Wagner. And Richard Wagner uh, wrote a lot to poetry. And, and, and the first four songs were poetry uh, based on a German author. And I lived in Germany as a child, so I understood the words. And then I looked at Renee Fleming. Uh, one eye I had on the poetry, one eye on her. I was in the fourth row. And, and, I, and it was beautiful emotional expression uh, that uh, she had to each word. 
you know, talk about the stars, you could tell she was looking up. It talked about a storm, she'd be looking down. And, and it was just fascinating. So there's poetry in music, yeah. And of course, I was in another world, so it's very relaxing uh, and uh, stress reducing. Uh, and uh, so, so music affects every cell in our body, picks up the, the vibrations, and the whole body gets, gets involved. So you can see how it can make you feel good. If it's music you don't like, I suspect, it can make you feel bad too. Uh, and uh, so, but noise, noise is the opposite. It's, it's annoying. It, it, uh, uh, and background noise uh, can affect us. You, a dentist, for example, so to be, be humming or, or listening to uh, some music, change the vibrations in your body versus the dental drill can make a tremendous effect and your interpretation. Uh, so a vocalist sings usually greater than 110 decibels. Uh, uh, and, uh, the, uh, uh, and people, of course, who have hearing loss, uh, some may even be totally uh, deaf, but they still can appreciate music because their body or their bone structure is picking it up without having the necessary uh, cochlea and hair cells uh, in the ear. And how m music is picked up, it's interesting, it's different in both ears. Tomato studies have proved that, uh, that in, in people who are right-handed, uh, uh, left brain dominant uh, usually, uh, it, the right ear uh, picks up music, uh, sounds a lot easier than the left. Yeah, the impulse enters the ear uh, through the middle ear and then crosses over to the other side of the brain, comes back and comes back through and then registers mainly in the right temporal lobe. Yeah, uh, it, it's very uh, interesting. Uh, and, and the uh, left ear uh, actually uh, goes back and forth across the couple of lobes and still ends up mainly in the right uh, uh, t temporal area. Uh, so. Uh, and then Tomata started publishing about the electronic ear, and he uh, developed uh, machines that you could sit down, and plug plug in your ears, and respond to different to different noises. Uh, and they have found that uh, children will learn better uh, with music uh, uh, playing. Uh, so uh, the different tones uh, of the vitamin C. And the best one of that is frequency. If you change the frequency, uh, the ear picks up that better uh, than uh, anything. And uh, so uh, the tomato centers were really going in the uh, 1980s or so. So then he started, at that time, he started mixing art with sound. Uh, and you hear about art therapy. So looking at art with your eyes, see another sense. This time he used the eye sense versus uh, the uh, hearing sense. And mixing the two together uh, was even uh, p producing uh, a, a better learning experiences. And you could take some children who were somewhat slow, and through music and art, uh, they could learn a lot better. They could read better. They could remember uh, uh, things uh, uh, better. Uh, so. Uh, even animals, they, they've even found that a, a frog uh, can be mesmerized by music, and he will have his right ear to the music, to the noise. Yeah, let's see, he's turning his head uh, uh, to the right. So it's based, you know, on, on uh, 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 evolution. Uh, and, uh, uh, and I wonder about that. I have two cats at home, and I kind of wonder that too. When I'm speaking or whispering, they seem to turn their head uh, to the right. So that's fascinating. And uh, they also pick up, I think, the vibrations of my body, my heart. I think they're synchronizing with my heart because I notice they're always sitting on the left side of my chest over my heart. And I often wondered if I had an EKG on, 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 on both cats, say one and then on my own, if they don't synchronize over a period of uh, time. So your ear is a gyroscope. It tells you in space. Uh, and they found also that if you st stand straight up, you notice in dancing, they always tell you stand straight up because you, you're like an antenna. You pick up 
the music around you better when you're standing straight up. You're more balanced uh, when you're uh, uh, standing uh, uh, straight up. So vertical posture is important. It's like a receptive antenna to, to sounds and, and, uh, uh, and vision. So posture is critical. So uh, uh, as Thoreau, the famous poet, said, and this is interesting, when I hear music, I fear no danger. I see no foe. I'm related to the earliest sounds of the universe and to the latent Thoreau. I once actually walked around uh, a golden pond. I was in Massachusetts. I walked around and that was uh, uh, instinct. So uh, through music and visual cues, we are or orchestrating uh, our life. So it's, uh, uh, and uh, we have an effect on us. We're, we're not faithful things that just happen to us. No, we're trying to control uh, our life and be, be the best that can, we can be. Uh, so, so music can be your best teaching tool. You know, after listening now and then here to these TV programs going on with election stuff, life appears to be in a turmoil. You know, I decided yesterday, I'm just going to turn it off and turn on music. The heck with it. It's a lot more um, organized. Uh, I'll be a lot happier. You might consider that. <laughs> uh, and uh, so uh, Norman Cousins wrote a book called, you know, Anatomy of an Illness. I read it a couple of times. And it's very interesting, you know, he is quite sick and he is trying to improve his health. So he traveled across the world and, uh, and he realized how you thought uh, had tremendous effect on your body. So you learned the mind-body-spirit connection, which has to do with your dopamine up front of your brain and the quick fix uh, and the, the serotonin receptors further back, the long-term uh, happiness. And he was visiting uh, Pablo Casals. Uh, uh, a big cellist in the world, very, very famous. Uh, and he was in his 90th year and, and apparently he was quite sick. So he, but he actually visited him and Pablo came out, you know, bent over, very stiff, hands swollen, looked like they couldn't move. And he sat, he had emphysema, uh, swollen hands, uh, almost claw fingers. And he went up to the uh, piano uh, and he played, and then he started thinking of uh, uh, the well-tempered clavier, that means the well-tempered uh, piano player, uh, by uh, Satori, and, uh, and he played that, and, and what Norman Cousin witnessed was unbelievable. The hands loosened up, the arms loosened up, uh, the facial gestures, he started smiling, uh, he sat up straight and he just banged out this tune beautifully. And then they got up uh, and they took a little bit of walk and he wasn't stiff and he looked uh, feeling good. And then they had lunch and after a while his body seemed to stiffen up again. What's the point? Music is healing. It reorganizes his brain. And just thinking of it and not even playing uh, can have great effects. So if you're getting this procedure done, no matter what it is, if you think, for example, or see the words of singing a song or the notes, or pretend you're uh, singing, just the thought process can reorganize your brain. It can, it can even take away uh, pain and make, make you feel better, better make you happy. Uh, isn't that an interesting story? It's a true story. It's, it's right in this book. I've seen it at other times. I lived in New York City, and I'd never met this man, but I was uh, writing about the mind and cancer, and this uh, psychologist, psychiatrist would take this lady with tumor of the breast spread all over the body uh, to the Metropolitan Museum of Art, which was two blocks from where I lived, and I thought I was poor. Who are you kidding? And, uh, but he did. So I never met him. And then they meet there for lunch once a month, and they would walk for a half hour through the museum uh, where they would look at her favorite art, not the doctor's, the patient's favorite art. And after five years, he restudied her, 
no evidence of cancer. One case is not proof, but he turned around then and, and studied 500 cases, and he did indeed prove that how you think has, in your mood and your emotions has tremendous eff uh, effect through art and music on your, on your healing. Very interesting story. Uh, uh, and uh, so, uh, but again, type of music is different one person uh, then uh, to another. Uh, so uh, what may be relaxing to one person may not be relaxing, you know, to another. So uh, music can slow down and equalize your brain waves, okay? Maybe they're like this, and you're very excitable, stressed out, nervous, tense, and you kind of uh, putting them to a calm uh, state. Uh, so uh, when you're conscious, usually using beta waves, that's about 14, 20 waves of, uh, that's about 14 to 20 hertz, okay? Uh, calm usually 8 to 13 hertz, the amount that you will tolerate. Theta sleep, when you're asleep, that's about brain, about 4 to 7 uh, hertz uh, in, in noise. 5 to 3 hertz is, uh, is a deep sleep. So our brain patterns change. So if you think you're sleeping, it's just a relaxed brain sitting there. No, it's very active. It's, clean, it's cleansing itself. It's putting down uh, memories. Uh, and, and, uh, and you will cycle uh, th uh, through the night. And at times, uh, you may think you're asleep and you're uh, actually essentially awake. Uh, and uh, so sleep is not a, a total rest period. You may think you're resting, but the brain's working. Uh, you're just not moving your arms and legs. So meditation, yoga, biofeedback, uh, played with music, usually about 60 beats per, per minute, can be relaxing uh, while you're doing your yoga activity. You're working with the muscles. Uh, incidentally, the ear uh, is uh, uh, attached to chemicals and nerves to your muscles. Yeah. So whether you're listening to music or say you can, uh, you can hear a noise, that's one thing. But you can listen to a noise. That's where you actually have an emotional reaction to it. Okay, and it affects your muscles. Uh, so you uh, can affect this tension in your muscles, for example, uh, through uh, uh, music, for example, talking, humming, uh, uh, that you can relax the whole body doing that, okay? Some people, you know, meditate. They don't think of anything to quiet the man. The mind, they use a mantra, they repeat the same word, and they quiet the mind, and they come into another state of consciousness. They're awake, uh, but, but they're totally concentrated uh, into one. It's, it's very relaxing. Uh, so uh, a lot of times your heart beats uh, react to the sounds that you're hearing, okay? The frequency, the tempo, the rhythm. Uh, uh, faster music usually produces a faster heartbeat that has been tested. So music in some ways is a natural pacemaker. Yeah, it's a natural pacemaker. Very fast music, this will uh, speed up. Uh, it, it's, it's interesting. Uh, so poetry strengthens the, the heartbeat, generally slows it down. It depends on what the words are and how you respond to it. Uh, uh, so and uh, so uh, uh, operas. I mean, what they what, what what are operas? They're about emotions. They're about conflicts, uh, and so uh, they can sort of pull us into the story uh, of our mind, and, and the music can can mesmerize you, relax you, put you in another world. I've been I I've been at concerts uh, where I walked out and I thought I. Uh, like an out of mind experience, uh, and they uh, pulled you uh, right in. Uh, and it can uh, even books have been written by Don Campbell, for example, that with music they can lower your blood pressure. Uh, that that's been done. I've noticed that myself, or, or through breathing techniques can lower your uh, blood pressure. 
but uh, I checked it myself when I was doing full-time neurosurgery. My pressure went a little bit. I noticed since I'm not doing neurosurgery, but instead, you know, little TV, radio, little yoga, tai chi, pickleball, tap dancing, <laughs> my pressure has been down. So uh, that that affects it, and uh, and uh, so music can regulate uh, your stress hormones. Music can increase your immunity. Yeah. Norman Cousins, remember he had all these uh, illnesses, uh, and uh, uh, through music, uh, he found uh, that he's more, uh, much more uh, relaxed, was getting uh, less, uh, less uh, uh, illnesses. So uh, music can change your perception and time. I'll tell you an interesting story. When I was a neurosurgeon all those 45 years, a lot of long operations, taking brain tumors out at the base of the brain, things through a microscope, might take six hours from just concentrating. I always played music, yeah. Uh, I played the music of Andre Rue from Europe, R-I-E-U. He was just in Detroit a week ago, and I went and said hello to him, him and I became friends. And I play one, I was mesmerized by the music, and, and, and it was fairly calming uh, and happy because you can play music that upsets everybody in the operating too. What's been found as an interesting is the unconscious, opposed that unconscious patient, that body picks up the music. Yeah. Occasionally, I've had a patient, I remember entering an operation one time where every time Dick and Harry in the operating room was criticizing my patient's body size, which was out of hand. And I walked in, I just couldn't take it. And I chewed them out one by one, one by one. I, I really got mad about it. And you know what? A patient afterwards told me every word that had been said. And I know she could hear it because someone did tell her a joke during the thing, and she repeated the joke to me. So I know she heard everything that, uh, that was said. He says, I'm not going to sue the hospital, Dr. Cashman, because you really stepped up to bat for me, which I did. I took on everybody, including anesthesiologists, so in the future people knew we don't comment uh, on anyone's body size and the surgery that I'm involved in. But again, it proved that, that people still hear. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that she repeated the joke word for word, which wasn't, uh, you know, cut, sort of a nasty joke, not about her, but uh, so I knew it was that, uh, that one. Kind of interesting, isn't that interesting? So, uh, so uh, music can increase our memory and learning. They've learned that in children, uh, and children learn better uh, through uh, music, depending on different age. You know, between age four and six or seven, those grades, uh, they uh, learn physical uh, exercise, uh, and re uh, respond better to listening to music. Uh, they don't understand the emotions like 8 to 11. Now then they start picking up the emotional part of it. Uh, and, and as they get further on, uh, the, the uh, body uh, connects and the muscles connect uh, better to music and the uh, intellect. Uh, and so different ages, uh, t totally different. So playing music to children and to take music out of the schools, like some schools are doing, they just lack of knowledge. They just don't know. They're making a big, uh, big mistake. And especially remember what I said before about certain ethnic and racial groups, that, that through uh, thousands of uh, years ago, uh, it's in their genetic structure to be a lot more musical. Uh, have you noticed this difference in music appreciation and ability of different ethnic and racial groups? That's, that's in their genetic structure. It was put there by uh, evolution, God, whatever you want to call it. Uh, uh, so to take advantage of music and teaching is important. So to take music out of the schools is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, the scientific proof that that is uh, uh, wrong. Uh, so it can give us music and give us a sense of safety and well-being. You know, some little children in, a, in abused families, for example, if they are taught music in school, they can come home and they can start humming or singing or dancing, uh, turn the music on, uh, and, and feel a lot better. Like that. I can do it. It happens to me. Music stimulates the digestive system, too. Yeah, you can digest better because, because uh, uh, 
what's living in our gut, our biome, we have there trillions of bacteria, and they can respond to vibration and noise. So uh, it affects our uh, digestion, our sexuality, our, our ability to produce uh, and, and, and do manufacturing in our jobs, and place our music uh, in certain uh, jobs, I think is a real uh, value. And we play some music, you know, doing yoga and, and uh, toning classes uh, is very helpful uh, to us. Uh, and you might try different types of humming. You know, say day one, try humming. Mm, om, for example, and repeat it for a minute, see if it relaxes your body. For other one, uh, try an ah, uh, try an ah. Uh. For other ones, it's an E. That's, they call that sonic caffeine. E, try that for a minute or two. See if that relaxes you. It, different effects in different uh, people. Uh, okay, experiment with it. And uh, so, uh, so when we speak about the psychology of it, uh, it's the, the voice of Venus and Mars. Freud's, uh, for example, used talking cure. Well, some of that was the vibrations uh, that apply to the body just from, from speaking, okay? Uh, a man named Newman uh, uh, thought singing uh, was a direct path to the unconscious mind. Interesting. Since I'm taking singing lessons, okay, <laughs> who would think of that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Shall we dance? Okay, it's what I'm working on recently. Man, then I, I knew the polka, so then at the interim there, I broke out into the polka. Man, that was relaxing. I really liked that. I liked the words. I liked the rhythm. My body was picking up. And then to, to between verses, to uh, polka for a few minutes, that worked really good, good for me. And uh, you may have a different song. What's, what's your song? I say, what is your song? Uh, uh, so uh, you want to know what your song is. Okay. And now let's speak a minute about a rap, for example. Now I might say, boy, those words, I don't like those words. But let me uh, tell you something. We all come from different c cultures. Uh, there's a lot of physical activity in there. That's uh, very good. With, this, with the rap song, they're telling a story. They're telling you a story. And maybe you ought to listen. What some of these kids are coming from that do this, they're coming from very bad circumstances, not essentially their own creation. That happened because they were responding to something else occurring in their life. You know, stress, alcoholism, uh, narcotics, poverty. They're telling a, a, a story. Uh, uh, and, uh, and it can be a good story. I'll tell you a funny good story. Recently, I take tap dance lessons, so uh, over the Cherie Key is one place I take it. Uh, and and uh, my teacher, uh, Sheena, says, uh, Dr. K, would you like to be on the stage of the Civic with me uh, and do New York, New York? And I mean, I'm not the greatest tap dancer. I'm just you know, doing it for a year. I do it for relaxation, exercise. I, I said, OK. I didn't realize she was teaching 150 kids. Uh, yeah, because they came later in the day. I never saw them, so I was totally unaware of it. 20 years Sheena's been doing this, Shariki, yeah. 20 years. Can you imagine the happiness she's brought to people? But I'm waiting to go on stage. I have these little six and eight year olds with uh, uh, all kind of beautiful jewelry on, beautiful dresses on the stairs looking down at me, and I'm thinking, now wondering what this <laughs> guy with the white hair is doing here. But they had big smiles on their faces. That was the best part of the whole trip. Uh, is what it was doing to these children through music and dancing. Can you imagine when a the kid's there going to be? When I get done, finally, I went backstage. Uh, I couldn't find my wife because there was a full house. Uh, so I watched other people. And out come about 20 kids rapping with beautiful words, jumping forwards and backwards over each other, somersaulting. Uh, can you imagine what this was doing for those children? And Sheena's been doing it 20 years. I, that's what I say to that. Music, exercise can help it. So I think rapping is a good way. I myself, before that, had adopted, because I teach at some colleges, like I did Tuesday at Trine University, developed some spoken words while I write poetry 
uh, to things I'm trying to change, like to get rid of type 2 diabetes, sugar is a booger and a hooker, okay, as I'm speaking. The students frankly love it. And I've converted to a little bit of poetry. You know, if I rule the world, you know, I'll use a song, or sing in the rain, uh, things like that gets people's attention, the different mindset, and then they listen to my words. Uh, so that's spoken word. It, it's used a, a lot uh, in the yeah, uh, black population to tell a story through poetry. I think it's the greatest. That's how I learned about it. And, uh, and uh, I'm up to six stories now. Walking in Nature is another one that I have. Uh, it tells a story, but through a little bit of poetry, through music. And, and, and the students love it. They re remember that. I think my lecture, they've probably forgotten in about a half hour, maybe, <laughs> maybe less. Yeah. But the ones I do through song and music and one-liners, uh, uh, seems to be there till next year because I had three girls step on the back and say, Dr. Cashman, we know sugar's a booger and a hooker. <laughs> you remembered that. Well, sugar is the main cause of our illnesses, so it, it puts it in the mind. So uh, let me read you a little bit more about rap. Here's one, here's a rap song Rap and Unwrap, okay? Rap and Unwrap, really bad. That's the way I feel. Can't they see? I get a bad, bad deal. They would only listen to what I had to say. I would feel better each and every day. <laughs> okay. Hey, that's a good one. Mind, body, you have to visualize that they're dancing, jumping over each other while they're doing that. Here's another one. Today I was tired. Today I was bored. Today I was stuck in feeling like muck. <laughs> I stacked the rap. I, I started to rap. I started to move. In only five seconds, I was in a new groove. Hey, man, remember these. You need a copy, let me know. I'll get it to you. <laughs> and do some uh, rapping at home uh, and, uh, and s some music to it. Uh, and can you imagine how relaxing that is? So, uh, and we were. So I think rapping is, is a good thing, and uh, we need to see more of it. Maybe spoken word might be uh, just as good, maybe a little better, but I think uh, rapping be more exciting, okay? Uh, and uh, so uh, we do have a musical intelligence uh, in our brain, some more than others. If you had Mozart's parents, I imagine he's got a little more than me. Uh, I, I actually remember visiting my cousin in Germany because I'd played, you can't believe this, at age 16, I played the piano at Carnegie Hall. I wasn't that good. My music school got me in there, okay? Don't think I was that good. So I visit him, and, uh, and he listens to me, and then he turns on the radio in Germany, cooks often, and he pulls out a violin. He's playing it. Can't read a note. Can't read a note. Played 20 minutes of those beautiful music. So I think he... Uh, I didn't think enough to know then to see who his mother and father were, okay, maybe it was the Mozarts, and it, but it was in his body. He could feel this in his body. He could see the notes. Uh, it, it was, uh, unfortunately, I cut back on music after that, which was a mistake. N never should have done that. But, but my point is, it's not just practice, maybe 70% of it. Yeah. That's very, even the biggest concert pianists that practice he managed many hours per day but some of it is how receptive your brain is to it. Kind of interesting uh, 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 story. Uh, and uh, so our brain does have a, a musical connection to it. It's the way it's organized, uh, okay? And so people who use music, uh, and they actually found, uh, some people find uh, jazz to be more motivating, and more integrating uh, the brain, increasing mathematical ability of the brain like, uh, like uh, Bach used uh, up here. So it can enhance our speech, our listening. Uh, so uh, in churches, they'll use choral music, which is a different uh, a decibel relaxing, for example. Uh, they found in musicians that the middle of the brain called a corpus callosum, which connects right and, and left, is bigger in musicians. Yeah. And, and they found uh, also uh, a part of the brain called the planum temporalis, that's in the temporal lobe uh, where the hearing goes in musicians. They measure it. Now it's, uh, uh, it's bigger. Uh, so uh, 
when, when, when we finish high school, most children at, at that point have fairly well developed their musical brain. So it, it's children, remember? The brain stops developing much after age 25. The, most of it even at the high school level. So if your kid is in band or marching or playing an instrument regularly or uh, going to Sweetwater, and we thank Chuck Sirak for all the music he's brought to town uh, that we should take, take advantage of, uh, it, it's very important, it's very uh, good uh, uh, for your uh, child. So we, we see it in spirituality, uh, in churches. We have mantras, mind energy, you know, re repeating the, the same thing. Uh, so uh, we think that music and dancing uh, was earliest in, in creation. Uh, and even you see it uh, in, in churches, e even in that. So uh, we need to, to sing uh, in church as value f uh, for us in spirituality. So it, it lets the brain, see your brain is an orchestra. It's an orchestra. It's a brain speak to your body. And that's where I already mentioned my, my uh, spoken uh, uh, word. Uh, so that's where mu music therapy has come in over the years, how we can reorganize our thought process if we have cancer or negativity or stress. So uh, what, what if I've been telling you here uh, uh, for the last hour or so uh, is that, that I, we're using maybe 10% of our brain, okay? If we stimulate it, especially I think in our children, our newborns, and maybe even when the child's in uterus, bring music into the life. You will, you will have a smarter child. You'll, you'll have a more musical child. Yourself will be more relaxed about your responsibilities because you're singing and dancing. And I, I saw, was coaching a couple of people today, and they, they, they sing and dance while they're doing the dishes. <laughs> okay, well, that's a great one. I, I never sing them because I don't do the dishes. <laughs> okay, but uh, I thought that was uh, very interesting. So i like you to take an interest in music. Uh, let's face it, Fort Wayne's become a musical town. All these new modalities we have here, from ballet to dancing to yoga, yoga studios are, are, are uh, everywhere. Uh, and uh, we're going to be one of the music centers, really, of this country. We need it because we have basically not too healthy a town. And, uh, and, and I think it's like a knowledge. I'm trying to bring the knowledge there. Watch my other programs. You can go to uh, uh, Facebook, Cashman, and Live to Be 100. I got maybe. 500, 750 old YouTube shows, all on health, how to, to be well. Uh, and uh, and uh, music is part of it. Selecting the, selecting the correct food is the most important thing. Uh, 70, 80% of vegetables and fruit, uh, just a little bit of meat, take a walk a day, listen to uh, some music, you'll probably live to be, uh, live to be 100, <laughs> okay? I think the message is getting out there. Uh, if you have other ideas, bring them to me. I gladly uh, mention them there. Incidentally, I do take dance lessons. I take piano lessons. I take voice lessons. I play pickleball. I play uh, 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 tennis and, uh, uh, and, and enjoy all of it. And it, uh, having celebrated my 43rd anniversary of my 39th birthday, taking zero pills, Hey, you know, I'm just trying to demonstrate what, 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 what I'm teaching. I'm not, I'm not bragging anyway, but I've written many books there on Amazon, about 15 books there. Watch our TV shows. I give a free lecture at Lutherans uh, once a month. Uh, and, uh, and joined us in a circle of wellness. I do this because I love you. If you see me, talk to me. Uh, and uh, and uh, namaste. Watch other shows. I do this. Because we love you. Thank you.